The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, the body wouldn't stay in the bay. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Presently, I'll tell you of nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, The Whistler. This is where it was, right here. Not where the story ended, as Jim Mars thought it would, but where it really began. This is the spot where the beautiful Monica Lee's body came to the surface and was discovered by the police. They identified it and returned it to a small town down the coast where it was claimed by relatives. And Jim Mars quit thinking about it. That was six months ago. Yes, this is where it was. On the dock by the bay outside the Skyland Club. Jim Mars Skyland Club. Here comes Jim Mars. He owns the Skyland Club. He likes to see a crowd in the club, but he doesn't see one now and he scowls. He walks around the tables and up the stairs to the door that says, Manager on it. He tries it. But it's locked. Jim Mars, open it. Just a second. What's the matter with you, Tony? You scared of something? I keep it locked lately. No use taking chances. What chances? Everything all right? Sure, but who knows? Somebody's always beefing. They're bound to when you're running a clip joint. I thought you knew what to do when anyone beefed. You gotta be tough. That's the only way to be right. Sure, if you can't do it any other way. There isn't any other way. You know what's the trouble with you, Tony? Sure, I got ulcers. You got ulcers. You got holes in your head. All right, you tell me. You lost your nerve, Tony. What? I said it. You ain't got your nerve anymore. I'm going to keep my eye on you ever since that little blonde on the floor show was found in the harbor. Why should it bother you? You didn't kill her. Or do you feel responsible? Yeah. Yeah, what? I brought her in here to give her a chance. She was a good, clean kid. And it was a good thing I tried to do for her. I wouldn't have cared if it had been one of the others, but it has to be her that gets washed up out of the harbor. And for that, you lose your nerve? Listen, I've heard of guys losing their head for a gal, but never their nerve. And a dead dame at that. Monica Lee wasn't a dame. She was a nice, clean kid. She didn't know from nothing. Meaning what? Meaning she wasn't brought up to understand she couldn't say no to a guy like you. Some people learn hard. You think you taught her anything? Listen, things are either right or they're not right, see? I got no time for teaching. Now, while we're talking about things that ain't right, what about this club? Sure, Jim, what about it? If Monica had lived, we'd be making money by now. But she didn't. And it ain't paying, is it? No, not quite. We're losing a little. All right. I put enough dough on this plate to start three clubs. I want to start taking some in, see? Jim, you know you can't take it out if it's not here. You're the manager. See that you get it here, then. Well, I'm through with you. And I mean through. He's sort of a nasty character, isn't he, Tony? He's got all the courage in the world. You had it once, till Monica was killed. Maybe if you could get your mind clear, you'll think of some way to get even with him. Maybe you'll think of something. Walk. Walk, Tony. How did you happen to walk down here, Tony? Down by the dock? Is it a coincidence, or did something attract you? Yes, there's someone right over there who'll be glad to see you. She trails you down here, and she's waiting, Tony. 
What do I get if I bump Jim off? Nothing but trouble. It's not true what he said. I haven't lost my nerve since Monica got killed. I got it yet. I'm just playing it smart. What happened to Monica? What's that got to do with it? Hey. What's that thing doing over there on the pier? Hey! Hey, you! Stop that! Wait! Here, you can't do that. I can't do that. Jump! What? Jump! I thought you were going to... Jump? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean... You were wrong. All right. I guess I was. Must have been saying things. I... Yes. I guess you were. It's the place. A friend... A uh, girl. They pulled her out of this water here. I can't... A girl? Yeah, she was... Something happened. And you're haunted by the memory. No, who said I was? I thought that's what you were saying. I wasn't. I said I wasn't. Oh, yes. I heard you. Well? You just came down here because it's a nice place to walk. Beautiful scenery. Lovely atmosphere. No. No? I was just walking and thinking, and here I am. I'm figuring I might jump. I saw you there. I swear it looked like... It must have been on your mind. Were you thinking yourself? Me? (laughs) Why should I? Yes, I see what you mean. I thought maybe it was on your mind. About that girl. What about the girl? Not a thing. You mentioned it. What's the matter with you? Somebody putting drops in your drinks lately? Or is it indigestion? No, 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 it's nothing. Just a guy I was thinking about, that's all. A guy I was talking to a while ago. Jim Mars? How did you know? Do you know Jim Mars? I know a lot of things, Tony. What? You know me? Who are you? Stop, let me go. Okay, okay, I won't hurt you. Only it's so dark I can't recognize you. That's just as well. You might not want to know. Stop it. Tell me who you are. Maybe Jim Mars wouldn't like it. A double with Jim Mars. And your sentiment for Monica. You know her name was Monica. I told you I know a lot of things. Like what you were thinking about on your lonely walk tonight. You were thinking you'd like to kill Jim Mars, weren't you? You're pretty smart, aren't you? You know an awful lot. That wasn't hard to know. Jim always did give you a bad time, Tony. Who are you? Tell me. Here. Why don't you light my cigarette? Sure. Monica. Monica. No, it can't be. You should know, Tony. Monica. No, Monica's dead. Killed by Jim Mars. Dead and in the bay and now on the ground. Let's not go into details, Tony. I don't get this. I thought... thought you were dead. Do I sound dead? Do I look dead? voice sounds a little different, maybe, but... So help me, Monica, you look just like always. Now, let me tell you this, Tony Canelo. I'm not the same Monica I was before. You know what happened, and we won't go into that. But I'm telling you now, it can't happen again. I've come back here because I have work to do, and I mean to do it. Are you following me? Yes, Monica, of course. Haven't I always? Never mind. I just want it straight. You're not going to help me kill Jim Mars. I'm going to know it this minute. Yes, Monica, yes. I'm... I'll help you. Believe me, I will. And no funny business, Tony. Well, relax. I'm glad you're back, Monica. I'll breathe easier. And I wonder how Jim Mars will breathe. Not so easy. And not very long, I hope. How are you going to work it? I'd like to scare him to death. I'm afraid it'll take a little lead, too. I'll go back to work just like nothing had happened to me. You're never to admit that you see or hear me. That's all. It's going to be pretty nice having you around, Monica. It'll seem just like old times. That's right. Just like old times. You are listening to The Whistler, brought to you by your friend, the Signal Oil Company, marketers of famous Signal Gasoline, your best buy today. Remember to let every go signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline.
life will be a lot simpler with Jim Mars out of the way, won't it, Tony? And it helps to have Monica on your side, doesn't it? She gives you strength and nerve. It's pretty nice. But, Tony, don't ask yourself if it makes sense or not. Take what's given and be thankful, but don't be too curious about Monica. That'll keep till later, one thing at a time, Tony. Pretty awful, Tony. Monica, where'd you come from? I didn't hear you come in. Close the door. Been here long? No, just a minute. I thought I'd drop in and haunt you. But I don't seem to bother you. <laughs> you must think I'm a real person. You're real enough to me, baby, and maybe you think that doesn't bother me. You know, I feel like a new man since you got back. You've got nothing on me. I feel like a new woman. <laughs> Boy, that is a good one. <laughs> Hey, reminds me. Jim was here the other night. Did you see me in the car? I couldn't tell him. I didn't mention it. He didn't let on to me. Some of the boys tell me he's acting pretty jumpy lately. Good. I've instructed everyone in the chorus and around the joint that you are not here. Yeah. Somebody asks about you. They don't know from nothing. Swell, Tony. Yeah, what do you want? Boss, Jim Mars just came in the club. Where is he now? He's coming over this way. All right, Joe, leave your switch on. Sure, boss. He's right here. All right, Joe. You're talking to yourself. <laughs> Somebody has to tell me off, and there was nobody else. Look, I've been waiting for a horse to run for three weeks. So today he runs, and I'm not on him. Well, you take it from there. And he won by a mile. Well, you might as well try uh, Yabo on a seven tomorrow. Yabo? Well, gee, Mr. Mars, thanks. Hey, Joe, you remember Monica Lee? Monica? Oh, sure, sure I do. Hey, she was some chick. <laughs> Uh, have you seen anyone around here lately that looks like it? Like Monica? No, nobody could look like Monica, Mr. Mars. No? No, no, no maybe you're right. Well, then... Uh, uh, where's Tony tonight? The boss is upstairs in his office. And uh, thanks for that dog, Mr. Mars. I'll get aboard unless he's better than 10 or 1. Okay, okay. Boss, did you hear? Yeah. Okay, Joe. He's wise, all right. It's beginning to work. It's a nice little gadget, huh, Monica? Ah, oh, sweet. Hey, where can I go and listen to what he has to say to you? In the accountant's office. There's no one there now. How do you work? Just switch here, kick it up, yeah. like that. Now beat it. It don't make a sound because it comes through here, this door. Boy, are you getting brave. The door wasn't even locked. Oh, Tony, you can't really be that busy. Oh, Jim. How are you? Sit down. Sure, I ain't taking time you need for, uh, business? <laughs> Quit it, Jim. You know I always got time for you. Oh, sure. You can give me a minute, I guess, huh? Only make it brief, huh? Ah, oh, quit kidding, Jim. Oh, I'm kidding, huh? Well, aren't you? Yeah, uh, guess I am. What's eating you, Jim? Only you, Tony, that's all. Why me? This big shot stuff you're putting on with me, I don't like it, see? Oh, no, Jim, I don't see. I didn't know what you're talking about. Okay, okay, so I'm nuts. Just forget it. Make out like I didn't say a word. Anyway, maybe it's something I ate uh, or drank. Or did. What? Maybe it's something you did that upset you. Nothing upset me, I tell you. Well, I thought you said it did. And I didn't know, but what, it might be something in your past that was on your conscience. Tony... Since when have I had a conscience? Oh, I heard about guys getting one all of a sudden. You talk like you got holes in your head all of a sudden. Now drop it. Want a drink? Uh, not now. I want to talk business. Shoot. Don't tempt me. <laughs> That's sharp. <laughs> Pretty sharp. <laughs> How's business? Huh? You making any money yet? Ah, oh, well, you'll be glad to hear business is better. How much better? Uh, a couple of hundred a week. Expense about the same? About... Payroll? Practically the same. What do you mean, uh, practically? Oh, well, you know how things are these days. Had to give the dealers a couple extra bucks a night. I try to keep them happy. Quit, baby, and make them happy. That way they knock down too much. Hmm. How about the girls? The girls? Yeah. Uh, any new ones? Sure. The few in the chorus, you know what the turnover is. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll breeze. Keep it in mind what I said about this joint plan. Yeah, sure, I'll remember. Well, uh... Jim, was there anything on your mind about the girls? No, I mean... no, no, no. I, I just saw some frail down there last week. 
It looked like Monica. I, I want her, John. That couldn't be, could it? I never had one come back to life yet. You're bragging, Jim. Yes, Jim. That sounds just like old times. Uh, what was that? Who said that? Said what? You heard her, Monica. That was Monica's voice. Hey, you're nuts, Jim. I didn't hear a thing. You didn't? I didn't hear anybody but you. You're crazy. Uh, that box, it must have come out of that. Well, that, that's not even on. Want me, boss? I was just trying to see if it was on, Joe, that's all. See, Jim wasn't even on. You sure you didn't hear nothing? Look, Jim, you better go see the doc. How do you know you're not the one that's nuts? I just asked myself. Oh, nuts. I couldn't be. Why would she say that? What's she saying? Just like old times. Yeah, that'd be Monica, all right. She was always saying it. But these aren't old times. No. And Monica's dead. That was her they dragged out of the bay, wasn't it? You ought to know. You identified her, didn't you? Yeah, I did. But she'd been in the bay a long time. Yeah. Well, it was, Monica, and if she ever comes around, I'll have something to say to her. With lead. That would make it just like old times. Well, Jim, just like old times. Or so everybody says. There's something funny going on around here, isn't there? It's almost like a conspiracy, and yet you know it can't be. And you're getting worried. It's maybe just a little too much like old times. What with Monica around... Yeah, who is it? Jim, hello. Monica. Monica. Is that... Monica, is it you? Yes, Jim. Baby, I, I can't believe it. How can it be? Well, you don't seem very happy to hear from me. Believe me, baby, a thousand times I've been sorry for what I did. A thousand times that I brought you back if I could. And here I am, Jim. But how? Where? I don't think you believe me. But, but let me see you. I gotta talk to you, baby. Well, you're talking to me, Jim. But I wanna see you and talk. You drive me nuts. I've been seeing you day and night, hearing your voice. What's that all about, anyway? M Monica, you... You're not dead. You killed me, didn't you? Oh, don't throw it up to me. I didn't mean to shoot her. I lost my head. Sure you did, Jim. I'm sorry, Monica. Honest. Give me a chance to show you. I may. Right now. Let me see you and prove to myself that I'm not going nuts. That you're real. I won't hurt you. No one is ever hurt by something he's not afraid of. And Jim, I'm not afraid of you. Good for you, baby. Now, you let me see you? Oh, sure, Jim. I never could resist you. It's going to be different this time. Is that a baby? Where are you? Drop around to the club. At 11, I'll be in Tony's office. Why there? Why don't you come up here? Jim. All right, all right, all right. Good. Can't you make it sooner? Now, Jim. Be a good boy. All right. I'll be waiting. Me too, Jim. It'll be just like old time. <laughs> And now you're really confused, aren't you, Jim Mars? Partly relieved because now you know Monica is really back. But more confused because you can't figure out how she got back. You don't happen to believe in ghosts, do you, Jim? Well, you'll know soon enough. Remember, 11 o'clock in Tony's office. Oh, Tony. Huh? What do you think? I'll get smart. Okay, take a look around. I don't see it. That's... Or is she? Suppose you tell me who you're looking for. I don't know mine, really. Uh, that's right, you ain't. Look, I was talking to Monica today. She said she'd be here at 11. You must be haunted. Monica's dead. And who should know that better than you? I told you I talked to her today. Jim, didn't you kill Monica six months ago? Oh, I thought so. Then how could you talk to her? 
She was here, I tell you. I know that. Did you go see the doc yet? He said there was nothing wrong. Maybe you better have somebody check on him. You think I'm crazy? Well, I'm not. Because I could be, Monica. She might not be dead. I thought you dumped her into the bay. Oh, that's just it. I didn't. That's something I've never been able to figure out. Her turning up in the bay. Unless... Unless I only wounded her and she started crawling for help and follow up the doc. Oh, so you're not even sure you killed her? Oh, I... I don't know. We'll find out in a minute. It's 11 o'clock and she's... Gentlemen, please don't get up and I'll join your friendly circle. Circle. Triangle, and I don't like triangles. Triangles? What are you talking about? Now, boy. You heard her? Who? Monica, listen to you nuts. Brother, you really blown your top. What do you mean by Monica? Oh, look at you, dummy. Can't you see her? So help me, Jim. You and I are the only ones in this room. <laughs> Monica. Monica, did you hear that? Tony can't see you. He can't hear you. What does it matter, Jim, as long as we can see each other? As long as we can be together. Sure, baby. Just us. Us? What are you talking about? I'm talking to Monica. You keep out of it. Jimmy, you're telling me you can actually see Monica here in this room? Sure. Come here, baby. Get the show, Jim. You're, you're real. <laughs> Is she coming to you? Monica, come on, baby. Come over and prove it. Where is she now, Jim? On your lap? Don't be afraid, baby. Come on. You don't know it, Jim, but you belong in the nut house. Monica! Oh, baby, don't just stand there and look at me. Say something. Ah, uh, Jim, you better go home and hit the hay. I'll have the doc come over and give you something. And tomorrow we'll get it fixed up for you to go to some nice, quiet spot and rest up. Monica, say something. Tell me you'll forgive me for what I did. You're really going off your nut, Jim, begging for forgiveness from a ghost. And you said if you ever saw Monica again, you'd talk to her with lead. Well, go on, Jim. If you see Monica, go ahead. Talk with lead. That should show you there's nobody there. Go ahead. Start shooting. Monica, listen. Go ahead, Jim. What are you waiting for? Talk with lead. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe I will. Look out, Jim! <laughs> What's wrong? With those shots, I... Uh... Hey, Tony and Jim Mars. Yes. They're both dead. Monica. Monica, are you all right? Yes. Only don't call me Monica. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, picture this situation. Pieces of steel rubbed together 2,000 times a minute. Heat up to 2,800 degrees. That's what happens to your pistons every time your motor runs. And that's why, if your motor is to last out the duration, it needs the seven-way protection of Signal four-star motor oil, the finer motor oil that's solvent refined. This latest, most costly process known to oil engineers, solvent refining, Give Signal four-star motor oil, with its pure paraffin base, the finest lubrication money can buy. Solvent refining gives Signal four-star motor oil triple-strength film that clings to your motor surfaces for longer miles. Solvent refining makes Signal four-star motor oil flow freely in winter cold, yet retain its body when your motor's hot. Because of solvent refining, Signal four-star motor oil forms less carbon, Keeps your motor cleaner, smoother. Add it up. These features are today's best assurance of longer motor life. So if it's been a thousand miles or two months since you last changed oil, do your motor the favor that will help it go farther. See your neighborhood signal dealer and say drain and refill with signal four-star motor oil. And now, back to the whistler. Tony and Jim Mars lying dead, smoking guns in their hands, and Monica standing over them. Her gun in her hand, but she hadn't had to use it. And suddenly she doesn't like the name Monica. No wonder it's not hers. Hers is Maria, 
Maria Lee, not Monica Lee. That explains, of course, why Jim Mars didn't shoot her, but instead turned his gun on Tony. You see, the minute she walked in and Jim met her face to face, he knew she wasn't Monica. He guessed exactly right, that she was Monica's sister, who looked enough like her to be a twin. Right away, he figured Tony was in on some kind of frame-up deal, and so he shot him. Later, perhaps, he would have attended to Maria, too. But Tony shot him at the same instant his gun went off. Why? Well, Tony's plan was very neat. He figured Jim would shoot Maria, or Monica's ghost, and he'd shoot Jim. He'd be out of any rap on the plea that he had had to... tried to stop Jim's shooting of Maria. And he'd be rid of both of his troublesome friends. Yes, you see, Tony knew Maria wasn't Monica, too. He knew from the start better than anybody. Because it was Tony, jealous Tony, who had found Monica wounded by Jim's bullet. And to get even with them both, had finished the job and dumped her body into the bay. Monday at 9 o'clock, the Signal Oil program will bring you another strange tale by The Whistler. The Signal Oil program is broadcast for your entertainment by The Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline and motor oil, and by your neighborhood Signal Oil dealer, who is at your service daily to keep your car running for the duration. The Signal Oil program, produced by George W. Allen, with story by Hugh Keegan, Music by Wilbur Hatch is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking for your friend, the Signal Oil Company, and suggesting once again that you let every go signal remind you that you do go gasoline. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>